Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. The One Piece people are teasing season two, confirming that they've finished writing all the scripts and are just waiting to start filming episodes. That was the whole reason why they had the season two stinger at the end of the finale with that post credit scene. They knew that they'd be getting a season two, so they deliberately tease what they'd be doing at the beginning of the next batch of episodes. So we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. I will do One Piece season two bonus videos during the off season. We've also got the Avatar The Last Airbender live action series that'll be coming to Netflix next year. I'll be doing videos for that as well too. I've already done a trailer video, so I'll link it at the end of this. The showrunner did explain that they have season two completely written, like all the scripts are ready to go, but they can't start filming it till after the strike. And Netflix won't officially announce the season two renewal till after the strike, even though they kind of have already renewed it. Like that's why they wrote all the season two scripts. The actual season two teaser shows Captain Smoker from the manga looking at Luffy's wanted poster and it's meant to directly set up their Log Town arc, which originally was part of the East Blue Saga. And even though One Piece season one was meant to adapt the full East Blue Saga from the manga, the showrunner claimed that they just ran out of money. They couldn't add Log Town to season one. They wanted to do it during season one, but like literally they ran out of funds. So that's why a lot of stuff got moved to the beginning of season two. So if you've read the manga or you watch the anime, you already have a pretty good idea of what season two is going to look like. But they were just confirming with this post credit scene teaser that they will begin with Logtown. At the rate that they speed run through the manga, they'll probably get through Logtown in episode one and probably a little bit more than that too, like Reverse Mountain. Logtown is meant to be like the last major town in the East Blue on the way to the Grand Line before Reverse Mountain, and that's where Luffy and the others are headed right now as of the end of Season 1. What they'll probably do is they'll show up at Logtown right at the beginning of Episode 1 and just cut out a lot of the extra filler from the anime part of the arc. The anime turns Logtown into a bunch of episodes giving each of the crew members their own separate adventures, and all their stories wind up colliding towards the end of the arc. Mostly it's about Captain Smoker, who's another captain in the Marines that's in charge of Logtown, learning about Luffy the Straw Hats and trying to capture him. Logtown is a big location in the One Piece universe. It was featured briefly during season one. It was the home of Gold D. Roger, and it's also where Luffy's grandfather, Garp, executed him, which they also showed during episode one. They basically opened the series with the intro from the manga, as well as the intro to the first season of the anime for the most part. Some of this version of the backstory they show was originally part of flashbacks that Captain Smoker doesn't have till the Logtown arc. During that, he remembers his childhood growing up in Logtown, watching them execute Gold D. Roger. The other big thing is Luffy's father is also present Dragon. They don't really feature him during the main part of season one. The Garb stuff during season one was also a huge change from the manga. Maybe season two will also change the manga just a little bit and tease his father just a little bit more than they did originally. Like I said, his name is Dragon. He's a little bit more of a revolutionary, but like Luffy, he also doesn't want to have anything to do with the Marines. In his relationship with Garp, his father is also similar to Garp's relationship with Luffy. Even though Luffy and his father are on opposite sides of the law from him, Garp still respects and loves both of them. In the present day, he still has a pretty positive relationship with both of them, but they all have this understanding between them that even though he respects them, it doesn't make them immune to the Marines or the law. The other big thing at the beginning of this arc is Bucky and Alveda return to Logtown trying to revenge kill Luffy. They tease their team up at the end of season one, so they'll probably have some small version of this during the beginning of season two. They're probably not going to slim down Alveda's appearance though like they did in the manga. A lot of people wondering about that. She winds up eating the devil fruit and gets smooth powers basically, so attacks aren't able to hit her, they just roll off. They're also called slip powers, like attacks slip off of her. The way they explain her getting super hot in the manga is the devil fruit just made her look like that. She didn't get any kind of crazy workout montage or anything like that. On the TV show, Netflix will probably just bring her back with devil fruit powers upgrade and she'll look the exact same. Like they're not going to change the way she looks that much. The rest of season two will adapt most of, if not all, the Arabasta saga. It's way longer than the East Blue saga, so we'll see about that. Some people think that they'll split the arc up into multiple parts, but the way they said they plan on doing all of the One Piece manga, or they'd like to, and they're probably going to keep it to like five to seven seasons, they're probably going to speed run through the entire saga in season two. That means cutting out a bunch of stuff, but they did that during season one, so don't be surprised when they cut out stuff from season two. What they might do is Logtown and Reverse Mountain during the events of episode one. Reverse Mountain was the thing that they teased with the ending of Nami's map. The entrance to the Grand Line isn't too far off, but I think there's a mistake on the map. But it doesn't make any sense. These elevations show a mountain. I mean, how can a river go up a mountain? 
In the world of One Piece, the Grand Line is this large belt of ocean that travels across the world. It intersects with the Red Line, which runs in the opposite direction, also around the world. The Red Line is the reason why people can't just sail from one ocean to the other within the world of One Piece. The Red Line is basically like this giant mountain range that serves as this natural barrier between oceans. It's too high for normal people to climb, and it extends so far below the ocean that most people can't just go under it. There are a couple exceptions to this, like there's some races that live on top of the Red Line, some races have amphibious ships that can climb it, some races like the fish people, like Arlong's people, live underneath it because they can live underwater. Everybody has to go up Reverse Mountain to get across it. Even though it sounds super weird, like they kind of tease this at the end of season one, like I don't get it, like this doesn't make sense, why would the river go up the mountain? That is a thing in the world of One Piece, just the way the currents, the temperatures work, the rivers run up the mountain so you literally have to sail over a mountain to get to the Grand Line. What they might do after that is episode two might be some of Whiskey Peak, maybe a little bit from Little Garden. They also probably wind up meeting Vivi during Logtown, like the manga. She's the princess of the Arabasta Kingdom, which is the ending of this saga, which they'll probably use for the season two finale. So like, she's an important character that becomes part of the crew that they meet at the beginning of season two, probably. She's also a double agent inside Baroque Works, which become much bigger as an organization during season two. They kind of tease them at the beginning of season one, I think just to set them up as a bigger thing during season two. They originally tried to recruit Zoro. And because in the manga, at the very end of this arc, they wind up meeting Nico Robin, who's a really high-ranking member inside Baroque Works, they might do that on the Netflix series early on, but she doesn't really become a full member of the crew until the very end of the Arabasta saga, which they could always wind up saving until season three. While this arc continues, Captain Smoker continues to try and track Luffy and the others, but when they get to Little Garden, the naming is kind of a misnomer and there are a bunch of giants that live there. It's also a bit of a Jurassic Park kind of situation with dinosaurs living on the island. It's kind of stuck in prehistoric times. We'll see if they go full Jurassic Park for the Netflix series. Sounds like it'd be kind of expensive to do all that CGI, so we'll see how they get around that problem. There's also the giant whale on the other side of Reverse Mountain. I don't know if they're going to do that or if they'll just have some references or Easter eggs for it. Depends on how fast they want to speed run this whole part of the manga. They might end Little Garden and start Drum Island arc during episode three. Drum Island is meant to be stuck in perpetual winter, so it's like a winter island. They're mostly famous for having amazing doctors. Luffy and the Straw Hats also gain the help of Tony Tony Chopper, who becomes the ship's doctor. A lot of people wondering if they're going to do Chopper from the manga. They might cut him out entirely. They'd have to do him to some kind of weird special effect. Like, it'd just be weird in general to see them try and adapt the character. So we'll see how they figure that out. They might end the Drum Island arc during episode four, like there might be a multi-episode arc. Luffy winding up having to battle with Wapole. His family used to rule that island and he's returned to try and take control again, so they have to defeat him. Then in episode five, they might start to cross over with the Arabasta Kingdom arc. But for the most part, at least episodes six through eight will probably be all Arabasta arc. During that, they have to travel with Vivi to the Arabasta Kingdom, which is a desert, trying to make it to Alabarna to prevent a big war from breaking out. The city kind of reminds me of Ba Sing Se from the Avatar The Last Airbender series. One Piece came before Avatar, so Mike and Brian might have been inspired a little bit by One Piece when they were creating Ba Sing Se. The whole war plot involves Baroque works who are behind everything. Luffy, the Straw Hats have to stop them. Vivi becomes part of the Straw Hats during this arc and working with them, but then she winds up staying in her kingdom after they finish. The main villain of this last arc is Crocodile, so they will do the same thing that they did with Arlong and turn him into a much bigger villain during this last part of the arc like they did in season one with him. When the season picks up, he's been the leader of Baroque works, orchestrating everything this giant war in the Arabasta kingdom. He's also one of the seven warlords like Mihawk, so he's meant to be extremely powerful. He created Baroque works as a way to build his power base instead of like a traditional pirate crew or a traditional pirate army. His big thing though is utter secrecy, like he's a Littlefinger Game of Thrones type of situation, like he tries to orchestrate pull strings from behind the scenes without letting anybody know that he's behind everything. Baroque works as an organization is fairly stealth, but even within Baroque works, most people that work for them don't know who he is and have never met him because he goes by a bunch of different aliases. They'll probably end season two with him being like the big final boss Luffy and the Straw Hats have to defeat with Vivi's help. And what they might do is during the season two post credits and like the way they tease season three is they'll just have some kind of scene with Nico Robin teasing her eventually joining the crew. She wound up joining the team in that very next arc in the next saga that they'll probably start season three with. 
Let me know in the comments how you think they'll adapt the Arabasta saga for season two and how do you want them to tease season three? Maybe, you know, early theory, they use the season three teaser to tease the world government. That could be like the other big thing that they do in the post credit scene is tease the world government meeting. Their whole goal is to cover all the manga and at the rate that Oda's going, the rate that the Netflix series is going, they might have a chance. The One Piece manga is in its final arc, but Oda hasn't been super clear on when the manga will actually end. Like he hasn't given an actual date. He just said that it's in its final arc, which could last for a couple more years or longer if he decides to keep going, which he might do. Just extend the final saga so that it's the longest one in the entire series by far. Post all your season two predictions in the comments and I'll do more One Piece season two videos when they release more information or an official season two teaser, but they're probably not gonna do that. At least Netflix won't announce it until after the strike is done. Click here for my One Piece season one post credit scene video and click here for my Avatar The Last Airbender Netflix trailer video in Easter eggs. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.